Now I want to have a look at First Peter, the first letter of Peter. This was written uh, to a suffering Christian community. And it was written to encourage them by reminding them of how Jesus had suffered for them. Peter tells them how Jesus was approved of and vindicated by God. How do we know that he was? Because God raised him from the dead and took him back to the glory of heaven. So just as you share Jesus' suffering, says Peter, you will share his glory. Remember, you are a special people. And so the reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 4 to 10. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also are like living stones and are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare his, the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. Peter was a man with great leadership qualities. The, the other fishermen followed where he led. And he was a man of courage too, even though he denied knowing Christ, eventually having been filled with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, of course, he, uh, he led the church and was willing to go to prison and eventually to die for his Lord. But he was also sometimes a man who opened his mouth and put his foot in it. But he was the man that Jesus chose to lead his group of followers and to begin the task of building the church. So Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter, which means rock. Fancy being given the nickname Rocky, and then being called to build the church. Something which, of course, no one had ever done before. So I guess there's a first time for everyone. Now Peter took his calling very seriously, encouraging and doing all that he could to build the church. And in that reading that we've just heard, he offers an invitation. Come, he says, come Come to the living stone. Draw near. Be transformed into living stones yourselves. Into stones that can be used <clears throat> by Jesus as he builds a spiritual house. As he makes you into a holy priesthood. Come and offer your spiritual sacrifices of worship. In the temple in Jerusalem, only, upon, only the appointed priests could offer sacrifices in worship. Now everyone is invited to come and meet with the risen Christ. We can all draw near to God because of Jesus' death and resurrection. Living stones are far superior to the stone of temple because Jesus has made us so. Jesus is the cornerstone who is precious to God, chosen by God. Jesus is the living stone who is rejected by the world. Jesus is the cornerstone of the church, holding everything together. And just as many had stumbled as many had stumbled over Jesus, now the church, the body of Christ, became the stumbling block as it proclaimed the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. A people that claimed that Jesus was the promised Jewish Messiah was not welcome. Stephen, the first Christian martyr, was stoned to death because of this belief. Choose your side carefully. Now, as followers of Jesus, we are living stones, precious to God, who is building us into a spiritual house, 
into a temple where God himself dwells. Imagine, we are a living temple made of living stones. And God dwells within us by the power of his Holy Spirit. We are a spiritual house, not adorned with gold and precious jewellery, but with the imperishable beauty of the holiness and faith in the lives that we show, our lives as Christians, all called to reflect the glory of God. A spiritual house that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, and we have that same character of the Holy Spirit, producing within us the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. A spiritual house where the sacrifices of ourselves, our gifts, our praise and our good deeds offer to God through Jesus, who is the very cornerstone of this building. <coughs> Cornerstones, capstones are vital to a storm wall, are, are as vital to a storm wall as they, as they are to a building. If you've ever built a dry storm wall, and I've had a go when I was on the farm, uh, although I wasn't very good at it, I'm afraid, because it's a lot harder than it looks choosing the right stone. But if you've ever had a go, you'll know that the most important stones of all are the capstones that hold all the other stones in place. Get the capstone wrong and the wall won't stand against the storms that come against it. For those who suffer the storms of persecution because of their faith in Christ, like those Christians that Peter was writing to, you know, it is a case of holding on to Jesus, the capstone. And Peter offers those people further words of encouragement and hope. God's people have a purpose to proclaim God's praises he says because he is the one God is the one who has called his people out of darkness into his wonderful light from darkness to light from death to life and he also <coughs> excuse me and he goes on to say once we had not received mercy but now we have received mercy mercy is the gift of God as sinners, we do not deserve to be treated with mercy, but Christ died for our sins once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. We are held together by our common need of mercy. It's not that some of us are in and others are out, or those who are in, let those who are out come in, if you follow. The truth is that all of us are out, and it's only God's mercy that lets us all in. Even when we think we've been in for a long time, we are still dependent on God's mercy. Thank God for his mercy in calling us to be living stones, offering to him our gifts of praise and our spiritual sacrifices. And so we pray, take us Lord and use us, use us as your living stones to be built into a spiritual house where you can dwell and where others can see your glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. A good song to sing at this point might be for I'm building a people of power number 151 in mission praise but now I'm going to leave you <coughs> and our prayers will be led by Debbie so take care and I pray that you have a lovely weekend and a good week God bless bye bye Amen <coughs>